Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from Family Folk Machine, the intergenerational choir in Iowa City, Jean Littlejohn and April Clark. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thanks for having us. Before we got on the air today, I was remarking that it seems like, you know, a lot of performing arts venues... <laughs> those that are able to do anything uh, during the era of COVID kind of uh, shut down over the holidays. But you all have a brand new piece, streaming piece, debuting on January 1st. Uh, Jean, tell me a little bit about the, uh, second ver uh, the second round of One Planet. So we split our uh, original set of songs into three parts for our video premieres. And so this is part two of three. And we thought it would be really fun to have something to look forward to on uh, around the time of New Year's. And so uh, our associate director, John Renard, suggested we call it Sing In The New Year. <laughs> and so it'll be uh, New Year's Day at 7 p.m. and this will be a premiere on YouTube. So of course, if you have big New Year's Day evening plans, you can watch it later as well. But um, we're gonna have sort of a live event so people can watch it at the same time, just for something fun to do. Creating the um, the pre-recorded events and concerts and things like that. We've seen a lot of, you know, play readings and things like that. And sometimes even, you know, full movies, but doing it with music is extra difficult because of all the post-production involved. And April, I understand that you are, you've been one of the people who've had to learn all the video stuff to be able to put these together. Yes, I've certainly had a great opportunity to hone some skills and to learn some new ones. And that's been really one of the unexpected pleasures of this unusual situation is that I've gotten to uh, increase my skill set and help my brain grow and be creative in ways I didn't anticipate. I've really upped my skills in the video production world and learned more about audio too, as I've observed some of what Jean and Gayla, our associate director, have been working on. How many p different pieces did you have to put together for uh, for these songs? Well, uh, so we have five songs in this set, and um, most of them will have between thirty and forty different audio tracks, and then Gay and then Gayla further splits them up uh, to create certain magical effects that I don't I don't really understand that part, but. Uh, I, I do most of the editing on the singers and um, and most of these songs have 25 or 35 different singing tracks that all have to be like just right with each other. And, and then I send it to Gayla for the mixing and um, she works with the band tracks and then we send it to the video editors and they're creating uh, something totally different and in, in this set we have five very different videos from a visual perspective and April's doing several of those in just very different styles so that keeps it interesting. This isn't like some of the music video presentations we've seen online where it's you know it's 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 faces in a box and you know and and just you know watching and listening to the people as they sing you're putting the audio track together and then the video is something entirely different in most cases yes that's absolutely right um it started out we thought we would just keep it simple maybe have kind of a, a slideshow of images but then i think the video editors and i all felt like we raised the bar. We had so much fun doing more creative things that it spurred us to do even more uh, challenging visuals. And uh, I've learned some animation skills inspired by one of our other video editors, Susan Stamness, who is very accomplished in that area. So I thought, well, I wanna learn that too. So I've tried my hand at that this time, mixing animation and uh, live footage and photographs and all kinds of things. It's been so much fun. So it's really it's uh, it's if we harken back to our music video days of our youth, it's the it's a high concept video, not a performance video. I think you're right about that. Yes. Gene, <laughs> uh, when you are recording all of the different parts, you said it was up to, you know, 20 to 25 different singers. Uh, what 
what are they getting to help them stay in time? Are they singing just along literally to a metronome? Do you kind of have a little uh, performance uh, rhythm section track to keep them on uh, on time? How's that work? Yeah, that's such a great question. And it's um, kind of mind boggling to think that a year ago, I would have had no idea how to organize that. But um, early on in the pandemic, I heard about uh, what some other choirs were doing. And I was able to watch a couple of videos that went kind of in depth about what they were giving to their singers. And so that guided my thinking at the beginning. So we created guide tracks for the choir that they use. And usually it'll be um, guitar or sometimes guitar and drums together. And then we have, uh, we create, we record a guide track for each voice part and mix those together. So like if you're a soprano, you're listening to a guide track where the soprano line is quite loud, but all the other parts are there kind of in the background and you hear the guitar and the drums um, keeping the time. And if, if their parts are too, uh, if the rhythm isn't clear enough from those parts, I'll sometimes add a percussive track and, and then we have um, whoever's directing that song will also do a cueing track where we give um, oral cutoffs and things like that in the hopes that everybody will be sort of together when they record at home. And how successful was that, Jean? Like how much work is it for you to do all the lining up at the end? Do people obey your commands or not? Uh, it's, it's tricky and uh, it, it takes hours and hours and hours actually to get everybody aligned at the end, despite all that. But that's because uh, a lot of these songs are really hard, you know, and they have lots of syncopations and and because once you're once you're doing this digitally, you have this opportunity to achieve a really polished effect that like if we were singing in person, we would never um, we would never really be striving for that degree of total accuracy across the choir. It's just not possible, you know, with an amateur choir. And it's not as necessary when you're singing live because you've got all this energy and you've got the band right there. And, um, but here you can hear every detail so much more clearly. And so you want everything to be lined up. And in case you listen to it multiple times, you don't want little annoying details to stick out to you if they're not right. So there's a temptation for perfection. Uh, that is a good way of putting it, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the Family Folk Machine, as I said at the top, for those who don't know, is an intergenerational choir. So you take all comers from, you know, fairly young kids, you know, all the way up to seniors. That has to come with a varying degree of technical acumen, too, in terms of the people who are recording their parts. Um, yeah, but we've had uh, a really, I would say a really good age spread in the people that are submitting parts for this. So, you know, for some people it was easy to adapt and, but we've had other people for whom it was not easy, but they've worked really hard to figure out a process that works for them. And so that's been really excellent. That's been really nice. So five music videos that are going to be a part of this program. I know that the family folk machine does, you know, has a composition arm and that, uh, you know, that they're already working songwriters. Are any of these original or are these all arrangements of songs that we know? Yeah, we are really excited. Uh, in this set, we have one original song, which is a song by our associate director, Gayla Drake, who, of course, is a really well-established. She's written a few, you know, she might know her way around writing a song, <laughs> maybe just a little bit. Yeah, and this one is a song called The Old Straight Track. And um, I think it's just really been a favorite of the choir to learn. The lyrics are kind of... Um, just mysterious and they give you lots of places to kind of grab on to them and uh, and I'm really happy to say that even though uh, you know it's a song kind of has a sophisticated style and so it's not the easiest to sing in a choir because some of the rhythms are subtle and um, and 
the, you know, the way the melody turns and stuff. And I'm just, I'm really, really happy with the way the recorded arrangement turned out. It sounds fantastic. And Gala is really pleased about hearing it in this new guise. And April has created a video for that song that I think is just going to be really aesthetically interesting. April, do you want to give us any hints about yeah. it? I, I decided I wanted to try to capture the um, kind of moodiness of the song and slight spookiness, but also uh, one of the lyrical contents of the song is the idea of togetherness and partnership and friendship. So I took um, footage from local and area parks on kind of windy, moody days, put them in black and white and superimposed uh, silhouettes of different kinds of pairings of people kind of moving through the uh, video footage of local parks. And I, I hope it captures that spirit of, um, of moodiness and um, finding solace in scary times. Any other musical highlights you want to mention? Is the quiet in this set or is that next set, Jane? That's next set, yeah. Never mind, never mind, top secret. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> it's a secret. Um, well, we, we do have the first ever in our history Family Folk Machine choreographed number in this set. Yep. So. Wow. Really adding to the degree of difficulty since you aren't dancing together. Yes. And oh, through the magic of video editing, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and April has arranged that one too with the video. So that's great support from Claire Souter, one of our teen contributors. She did the choreography and uh, roped in some of her teen friends to be the, the dancing stars. And um, Alice Berner was another important choreographer in that song. It's Sing in the New Year, the second edition of the One Planet Mini Concert with the Family Folk Machine, streaming live beginning New Year's Day, January 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, how do people find the video if they want to watch it live or later? So we'll have a link for the YouTube premiere and um, we'll be able to publish that earlier, um, earlier in that week before January 1st on our website, familyfolkmachine.org and on our Facebook page. And uh, um, so we hope that'll be easy to find, or you can actually find it, our YouTube channel too. Family Folk Machine has a YouTube channel and so it should pop up right on, on there too. You said that this concert was the second of uh, three anticipated uh, mini concerts uh, that are gonna be streamed over YouTube. Uh, is that one in the can or are you starting up a new session? Uh, you know, I know that you welcome all comers, even in the time of pandemic. So what is the new year going to bring for Family Folk Machine? Yeah, we're really um, excited. We've been focusing so hard on this virtual choir project um, the whole time since about last June. And uh, we'll have the third mini concert uh, published in March sometime. But... We are going to, uh, we got tired of waiting for the dumb virus to clear up and we're going to start a new session in January um, that will, of course, be a lot different from usual, but we're going to resume regular rehearsals, but over Zoom. So uh, probably like every other week or so we'll meet for rehearsal on Zoom and those rehearsals will combine uh, you know, just opportunities to just do more singing because a lot of us who are used to being in choirs are just not singing very much at home. I mean, for me, like my whole family is around most of the time and uh, and everyone's having to respect each other's sonic space. And it's hard to make sure you have enough singing in your life. And so we thought it would just be great to provide an opportunity for people to reincorporate that. And we're hoping, hoping in these rehearsals also to include socializing. We're gonna learn some new parts for new songs and just do some other musical learning too. And I'm really looking forward to this. That'll start up on January 10th and people are most welcome to join us. Um, you can find more information on our website, familyfolkmachine.org as the time gets closer. And uh, I'll be happy to answer questions about that. You can contact me uh, through our website if you hit the contact button. 
Well, if uh, there's a singing void in your life and you'd like to join up, Family Folk Machine is starting up again right after the first of the year. And, of course, you can get a little bit of a uh, taste of what uh, the music of the Family Folk Machine is like with the Sing in the New Year concert, which is debuting on the 1st of January. April and Jean, thanks so much for being with me today. And uh, good luck as you roll that out. And Hopefully, I uh, trust that the remainder of the winter, while we're all still isolated, will still be a fun experience as you gear up the choir and hopefully singing in person sometime soon again, too. I sure hope so. <laughs> you can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org culture or using your favorite podcast app. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.